still struggling to get it totally, totally like human. Um, game changer. Right, there are a couple of films I consider have a lot of impact on the in, this, in the industry. Now, um, of course, Avatar is one of them. Too money. You think so much you can read to characters, acting-wise, performance-wise. Okay. So now another game, game changer, Despicable Me. And the other side is not the uh, effects, but it's cartoon. Now, why is it important? <clears throat> because it costs so little to make compared to what people are doing at DreamWorks um, or Pixar. DreamWorks spend what? 160 million on a film, right? So how much money do they have to make to break even? So promotion is another 160 million, right? So how can you make the money back? Uh, Metcalf, somebody, the French, they, they did this little film that's got good story, good acting, with tiny bit of money compared to what the big players are spending on, and they make a lot of money. Now what happened? Um, Jeffrey Kassenberg would like to make a film like this, hopefully with the same similar kind of budget. So, not a prediction. I think in the next few years, a lot of smaller companies will start producing films like Despicable Me. Good story, good acting, but low budget, right? So, big players, DreamWorks, Disney have to find a way to lower the, the cost. That, that's how Bangalore, India, Asia will come into play, right? Because we're more competitive right, in this part of the world, and we have talent here as well. So I believe that <clears throat> budget will go down a little bit, and more work will come to here. Okay, <clears throat> now another thing that I, because I'm actually crossover, I'm a kind of fusion kind of guy, so a connection with both sides, VFX um, and character animation. So I can see the development even now, every day, every day I see. Um, I think there'll be more and more people using motion capture. It's gotta be an important tool, right? Um, the technology is actually getting better and better as well. This is uh, World, World War Z. We use a lot, a lot of motion capture now. And now, the other one, which I like very much <coughs> as a film, I don't like the animation, it's Tintin. Um, my old boss, Steven Spielberg, film, Tintin. So, in fact, he didn't make it at DreamWorks, even though he's a partner at DreamWorks, um, but he made it with Universal. So why? Because he wasn't allowed to make a film um, that uh, doesn't just appeal to little kids in his own company. He wasn't allowed to do that. So, you know, when we were at DreamWorks, they would often have um, <coughs> Q&A. So usually at Q&A, you have somebody, somebody, some people from the industry. But our Q&A had Steven Spielberg and company meeting. So people ask, so um, are we going to do something um, that not just for the kids? Can we do animated films for adults? So the answer is everybody say no. Jeffrey Kassenberg would say no, no, because every film we make has to make money because we're a public company we have the answers to shareholders, so we cannot make something like Tintin at DreamWorks because this guarantee a box office disaster. At the end, it wasn't a disaster, but it wasn't a, a Shrek. It was not Madagascar, right? So um, they have to, because of the market, because of survival, they just have to keep making cartoons, making films that will appear to little kids. So Tintin is not one of those. But anyway, Think about Tintin is um, uh, Steven Spielberg. Steven always believes in motion capture. He likes that kind of thing. Um, along with uh, Bob Zemeckis, who, um, who also worked with him on uh, Who's Framed Roger Rabbit. Uh, from now on, in a lot of um, VFX films, or even character-based uh, cartoon films. So that's that's where. They can, director, producer can see how the film map out, mapped out that what it would look like at the end, early on. So, by the way, another thing about this, uh, well, if it's pure animated film, different from um, live action is that editing was done in the beginning, right? So if you shoot a live action film, 
you shoot your footage, depends on the shooting ratio, you throw a lot of things on the cutting room floor, and end up with an edit at the end. But in um, animated film, you start off with an edit, right? Before anything is done, if you have a storyboard. So previous, we become a very big, it's already big, but it become really even bigger in the next few years. And a lot of us in animation will be working on previous. Okay, so I can't believe it's not true. Um, it's effects that will affect, will be worked on. Um, now this is from War Horse. I remember, you can still, if you look carefully on YouTube, Google, you'll find there was a press conference, um, Steven Spielberg was there. Uh, oh, almost there. <laughs> huh? Yeah, we'll be all right. Ten minutes. Sorry, my time is up soon. Um, so they're saying that uh, War Horse is because um, they, they, they felt that they felt that Indiana Jones was there's too much effects on last Indiana Jones. So they wanted to make a film like War Horse that is kind of real, 100% just human and uh, animals. But the fact is, do you think this is all human and animals? Because they actually had 200 CG shots, all right? So what happened here? How many people were there? One guy, one person, right? These are just clones, right? They changed the color of the horse. They changed the perspective. So 10 people become 10,000. Battlefield, you know? The UCG, and you remember the horse jumping over the ditch? The end would they think that it was real? It looks real, but you know the horse is not going to do that without somebody riding on, uh, on the back of the horse. So CG um, effects, animation is usually a lot of films that we don't even notice. Okay? So let's quickly go back. Um, CG on TV as well. This is another thing. Games. Um, and then another thing, the last one to talk about is globalization. So NPC is open in Bangalore, Vancouver, uh, Frame Store is in Canada. So I think um, it's happening now, and it'll happen even more. There'll be less and less work being purely done in LA or Europe. Work is going to go out. I mean, it's, not going, it's now going out to Canada. It's coming to India, and people are trying to take it to China have difficulties, but eventually I think things like that will happen. There'll be a lot of chances, opportunities for um, other country other than US and, and Europe. Okay, so now, um, because of a time restraint, we can't really talk about um, uh, the, the really workflow in animation, but that's the boring part anyway. So before I, I wrap this up, I want to show you some example about um, how animation films were done, okay? So a couple of minutes. So you probably just saw um, the shot on my reel, but these days when you, do, um, when you do your animation scene, the first thing you do is this. I've looked into the reset button. The science is impossible. Ugh, if only the world had a reset button. I've looked into the reset button. The science is impossible. Ugh, if only the world had a reset. So, how does it end up? Ugh, if only the world had a reset button. I've looked into the reset button. The science is impossible. Ugh, if only the world had a reset. So that's the result. A um, couple of more examples, very quickly. That's me. I've transferred my even personality into a giant robot. Man! Do good work. Really terrific stuff, but we should probably turn it off. Okay, so let's see the result. So become Mega Mind. transferred my even personality into a giant robot. Man! Do good work. Really terrific stuff, but we should probably turn it off. Okay. 
one very last clip about how we're doing things at uh, MPC. Um, similar to, um, oops, similar to um, character animation at CG, we do step by step. Okay. So that's what we call blocking. Um, sorry about that. So everything is just kind of a little bit jerky. We talk about animating a deer. Okay. So position. That's how we show the clients how the the animation will look like with the live action, the composition where the deer will be. Um, at the end, it doesn't even move, right? But the client would get an idea about the end result a little bit. Now, let's go to the next stage. Oh, sorry. So I won't answer that. I'll just turn it off. <laughs> um. So now it's a little bit more detailed, right? And, and the clients will make some comments. And it's moving more at the end as well. Yeah? But it's still kind of blocky. Now let's look at the final result. So now we have a lot more details. And you see her tea, the deer struggle a little bit more. So there you go. And then, of course, it will go to lighting, compositing, and putting all the beautiful lighting, the fur, the fur on it. So I think the, this is what they have got time for. So we, um, we probably don't have time for quick questions, right? So. <laughs> huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody have questions? Yes. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, yes. As far as I know, motion capture is done only to portray lifelike figures, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so why can't motion capture be done for something like, uh, per se, Kung Fu Panda? I mean, the cap to capture the motion and then cover the figures around it and portray that. Why can't? Why should it be done for characters only, like uh, per se, Tintin or Mega Mind or resembling human characters? Why can't be it be done for other characters? Um, it's a good question. It's been done. The hold of heavy feet, um, they use mocap. It's perfectly okay to do that. You just have to modify the mocap data to use on the character. It can be a panda. It can be a human. Yeah. Thank you. It's, the answer is yes, basically. Anyone else? If not, we can wrap it up. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you, everyone. So we will take a quick coffee break of five to seven minutes, and we will come back for the concluding session of the conclave. Thank you.